Hello, welcome back to my channel, Crafty Concepts with Erin. I have a double page scrapbook layout for you today. We are going to be using this gorgeous change of scenery collection from Close to My Heart. I've already cut into this paper pack, so we've got some odd uh, scraps going on here. But as you can see, this is a very beautiful outdoor adventure inspired paper collection. Everything's double sided, so you've got lots of options. I love that cute little post-it to, uh, you know, scenery stamps there. And then this particular pattern, which again, this was a 12 by 12. And then this is the opposite side. Great burlap uh, texture there. Love that. And stay tuned to the very end. If you're new to my channel, after we create today's layout, I'm going to show you the other layouts I have created with this collection. I have five photos. This is a trip my family and I took. My husband, myself, along with our two boys, we went to Yellowstone with our motorhome for a week. And I'll tell you more about this particular view as we put this layout together, but it was just gorgeous. And as you can see, there's a lot of kind of browns in the stone, a little bit of green, and then browns in this, in my pants, you know, just kind of perfect with the green and this uh, background here. And then I can bring in these pattern papers to accent the layout. So five photos. I almost forgot. This is the coordinating sticker sheet. You've got a 12 by 12 sticker sheet. And I'm thinking about using this title, Loving This View, because we pulled over and we were checking out this gorgeous view. So I thought that this would be perfect. There's also a stamp set that comes along with this bundle and I love this. Some views are worth every step. So I think I wanna incorporate that onto the layout for sure. So we'll see how we can work that in as this layout develops. So let me clear these out of the way and bring in my Versamats. I've got some fun stenciling ideas to share with you today. And I do wanna mention that this collection is a special that ends at the end of May. So you only have a couple days left to take advantage of this awesome change of scenery paper pot pack. This is White Daisy. I'm gonna build my uh, layout on a sheet of White Daisy cardstock. I was thinking for my photos, kind of a linear design. I've got these and these are four by five and a half and I've got three of those and then two little three by fours that are just kind of little complimentary scenery photos. And you guys, it's so gorgeous. I The photos just don't even do it justice compared to what it was like being there. So I was kind of thinking I could do something like that, this, and then again, just create a linear uh, layout. I have had this scrap already cut so I just kind of threw my photos on there and I'm like wow I love it when that works out and oftentimes when I have a paper pack already cut into and I have usable scraps they will dictate the layout so I did kind of think about this before turning the camera on and I also have this one I know I want to bring in so I was kind of thinking you know, often when I do a double page layout, you just cut these directly in half. So you have a six by 12 piece on either side and it really ties the layouts in nicely together. Or you could take those two columns and move them to the outside of the layout and they kind of frame everything in. So let me cut another piece to mirror this one for this side. This piece was already seven inches, so I went ahead and cut another one, uh, again, just to carry that over. And I was thinking we'll do this, and then maybe bring in some more pattern paper on the bottom. I've got this one here, and I like both patterns. Let's just kind of see which one might look. I think I wanna use this one, because it's got the mountains. I don't know, I feel like it just goes along with the photo a little bit better. So we could cut a little strip down here. Let's try that. This way we can actually kind of try both sides. This paper, this pattern doesn't really have a direction because they're you know rotated every which way. This one does have a direction. So be mindful of that when you are cutting your paper layers. And let's see here. I'm gonna put my title over in this area here that uh, enjoying the view sticker will work very well in that area. So there's that option or we can do this option. Let's flip these over, see which one we like better. 
I like that one. Again, I think it just complements the photos a little bit better. Now, I don't need all of this, uh, you know, behind here. So now I can see just by looking at my Versamat, I really only need just like an inch and three quarters so I can go cut strips and make that fit and then save all that paper in the center. I almost had enough scraps to make that work. I love it when I can utilize my scraps like that. I'm not going to adhere anything down because I do want to bring in some stenciling and add it to the background, but this will, you know, I need to dry fit everything so that I know where my stencil is going to be. So this is going to be the base of my layout. And what I want to do is bring in this stencil here. So this is kind of an outdoor, here, let me bring, actually, I'll just bring in the core catalog here and show it to you in the catalog so you can actually see those stencil images. This is called Stencil Pack 1, and it's a set of three 12 by 12 stencils. This has been out of stock for a couple months, and as of right now, releasing this video at the end of May 2023, it is available. It just came back in. So I will um, also at the end bring in a few other layouts to share where I have used several of these different images just so you can, if you have this stencil, you can get other ideas for that. But I want to use this wood grain background over on um, this stencil here. I think that's going to look neat to add some just kind of interest to the background here. I thought I'd mention since I had this out, I have a three ring album here and this is what I store my stencils in. They fit right in the page protectors. You don't have to have a sheet of cardstock, but I had a lot of retired, um, you know, color uh, or blah, retired sheets of this color and I thought you know what it just it makes it a little bit easier to slide them in and out and you can see the stencils but yeah this is a great way to store your stencils and flip through and find what you are looking for and you know it's a pretty big binder they do have smaller size this is two inch there is a one inch too if you don't have that many stencils. I'm going to use toffee ink and I recommend a blending brush. There are lots of ways you can apply ink through a stencil, but if you look at this pattern here, it is a delicate pattern and these soft bristle brushes don't damage any of them. Sometimes if you have a sponge, it can catch on those super fine points of the stencil. So I do like the blending brushes better for this application and they go on so nice and soft and you can always darken them if you want to. So what I'm thinking is adding just like this border of the stenciling around the edge here. So I want it to butt up to the six inches so it's almost like it's connected or coming out layered underneath that paper and then framing in my uh, paper here. So what I'm going to do is bump these out of the way just like that. Close to my heart uh, sells this low tack tape in a couple different sizes, and this is really great for holding your stencil in place. And you'll notice this stencil comes pretty close to the edge, and I don't really wanna have to worry about being super careful. So if I just take a second to mask it with this tape, it will not only hold the stencil in place, but it will keep me from going onto the outside edge of the stencil where I don't want it. So I'm just gonna rip that actually. Got a couple pieces and you can reuse this several times before it loses its tack. So once I use it, I just kind of stick it in front of me to my, uh, you know, up on my desk, I have a little shelf and then it's ready to go for the next time I need it. So we'll just secure those to the background. We'll grab our toffee ink and add just a little bit of color to this section here. Now this is a squared off stencil. I am going to kind of follow those lines, but you don't have to. You can just do portions of a stencil and add like little, you know, subtle outlines here and there. This is a great way to add a little background interest to that white space. I do like white space, but you know, sometimes this just adds a little character and uniqueness and layering to the layout. Let's go ahead and check this out and see what we have here, the big reveal. I like it. 
I didn't need to worry about the area that's going to be, oops, there's my tape, it wants to be part of the layout. Get back up there, tape. But I, you know, didn't need to do where this paper is going to be. So, but that's an example of how you don't have to follow the lines. You can have it just kind of fading out. I am going to ink up the edges with mocha ink. I'll do this piece on camera, then I'll pause the camera and do the rest so you don't have to watch me doing this part of the process. I'm thinking I want to add more stenciling down in the lower right hand corner. This is going to create a diagonal line. I am going to have some embellishments down in this area also. So I want a little bit of this stenciling just kind of peeking out. I'm going to hold it in place with my tape and then we'll just repeat the process here. And if you don't like it, you can always flip the paper over and you have a blank canvas on the other side. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. It's just paper, especially cardstock. Don't be afraid to try different things on your layout. You're gonna surprise yourself and have fun in the process. I think that's probably good. Let's check it out. You can always line the stencil up and add more if you want to. That looks pretty good. We'll bring this back into place here. As I mentioned in the beginning, I want to use this for my title, Loving This View. And there are also a couple different uh, pine tree stickers. And I thought this would look nice, creating a little embellishment cluster and title over here. I've got a lot of space in the photo that it's okay if this overlaps a little bit. And I really do like it, but it's just kind of not standing out enough. We've got we need something to make this pop. There is glacier in this paper pack, even though I don't have any featured on this particular layout, it is a color in the paper pack and I'm going to bring some of this in. It's gonna add a little bit of vibrancy and just make it pop a little bit more. So I was thinking I could grab a marker color and color this in and um, yeah, let's see, what do we got to lose? Let's see how it looks. I have swatched my Spectrum Noir tribe lens and this way I can kind of get an idea of which color is going to look the best. And you know what? I think it's this the lighter color of the aqua blue. There's a couple different options, but yeah, I'm thinking aqua blue is going to work better for a color match. Off camera, I took my aqua blue blend marker and colored on the negative of the sticker sheet because that is not a white background. So theoretically, the color might look different layered over that. So I just kind of colored a little, you know, discard up uh, disposable spot of the sticker sheet. And I think that that looks pretty darn close. So I am definitely uh, happy with my color choice. The Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers are really fun because they have three different colors. There's a light, medium, and dark all in one marker. So it really takes the guesswork out and makes it super convenient. I am using the lightest color and I don't think I'm gonna add a significant amount of shading here, but I'm just coloring it in uh, each of the letters here to spell out the word view. And I'm stopping there so it looks like the loving this is kind of separated out. I didn't wanna color behind that section. And this was definitely a great view. This is called the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. So it was just kind of this um, short little hike. You pull over on the side of the road and venture down. And the Yellowstone River there you see in the background has carved down more than a thousand feet to create this canyon. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Like I said, the pictures do not do it justice. When you're there in person, it's just Amazing, it's breathtaking. I am going to add a little bit of, you know, just a line of the medium shade to the left-hand side of each of these letters to add just a touch of dimension. It is so easy to alter these stickers to make them work for your layout. You can use the markers like I'm doing here. You can use shimmer brushes to add a little sparkle. The uh, Stickles Glitter Gel is really fun to add to these stickers and kind of change them up a bit. Since we introduced the color glacier, I do want to repeat that elsewhere on the layout. I have a piece of glacier cardstock and I'm tearing this towards me to reveal that white core edge. And then I will tuck this underneath the pine pattern paper just to create a little bit of that color down here. Let me snip off the excess here. I want to carry that all the way across the layout. So off camera, I created another torn edge piece of glacier and we'll just slide that right under here. I selected some additional stickers from the sticker sheet. I've got a couple pine trees we'll put in this lower corner here. And then to create that visual triangle, I'm going to use this log round for my journaling right up top in this space. Now you'll notice here, do you see that 
line in the background, I'm going to switch these so that it is continued and it looks like one seamless transition. It's a small detail, but little changes like that really make a difference in the overall finished product. I want to add even more glacier, so I'm going to mat this on glacier cardstock and repeat that with the rest of the photos. I have decided I want these two smaller 3x4s on an angle just to kind of add some movement to this area. Now these are the coordinating paperboard shapes. There is this tree line, there's two of those actually, and then you have like this green color and then a wood grain look with different titles. So I know it's hard to see, but there's some pine trees on there, some greenery sprigs, lots of different things you can add. So these are kind of fun and they do come with the bundle. I want to create an anchor for these two photos over here. So I am just going to snip this off and then we'll save the rest for another project. I'm just going to create a small little border. We'll bring our trees back in and layer these over the corner. I could put, bump this down. No, I like it at the height of the photo there. Let's bring our trees back in and kind of frame in the corner and I'm gonna pop one of these up later on some foam tape. I also have this tag that was already created left over from another project. I've used the tabs and tags thin cut to cut that. And let me bump this down so we have more of the tag showing. I'm gonna use the postage stamp side. And then here's one I cut from Glacier Cardstock. You've probably noticed tags are one of my go-tos. They just work on every single layout. So I feel like a good tag die set is well worth the investment. You're going to get your money out of that one. You can cut them by hand, but uh, it's just easy to have a die. And I can always lengthen them and alter the die by doing partial die cutting. So you do have some flexibility there. Let's go ahead and pop this up on foam tape. This is a vacation, and even though it was only a week long, I took a gazillion photos, so it's definitely getting its own album, but there's not gonna be so many layouts that I need to be worried about too much bulk in the, in the album, so I am being kind of generous with my foam tape and dimension on the layouts for this particular trip. To add even a little bit more interest to my title and help it stand out, I went around the edges with mocha ink, and then I do wanna add some ink shading to this particular paperboard tree line here. I have my all-purpose mat, and I'm gonna to try to get that into frame for you guys. Actually, let me just move that. That's one of the benefits of a working on a verse mat. You can just pick it up and move it around if you need to. I've got toffee ink, and I want to just add a little shadowing to the edge of these trees. And you know what? The contrast it's it's not enough let's switch this to mocha ink which is a darker color a nice rich brown kind of a chocolatey brown and yeah we're just kind of grunging it up adding a little shadowing here and there and i am liking that contrast much better I would totally purchase a thin cut die of this tree line border. I love it. I know you can cut it out on your Cricut, but I am a huge fan of my thin cuts. I just think they're so quick and easy. I like that, but let's add it uh, even a little more color. I want that darker. We spend a lot of time in the outdoors, camping, just kind of hiking, things of that nature. So I am all about these outdoor related items. Let me wipe this up really quick, get that out of the way. We can put our layout back in place here. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some tape runner to the back of that. We can commit and get that into place there. I'm gonna layer it starting with the right-hand side so it's flush with the edge. And then we can bring our trees back in here. As I mentioned, I wanna pop up one. So I'm gonna adhere this one directly to the layout and then add some foam dots to the back of this guy. Actually, I'm out of my foam dots. Let's go with some foam tape. That works just as well. And then the nonstick scissors make it super easy to cut through the foam tape and get tiny little pieces and it won't stick or build up on your scissor blade. I'm looking forward to finishing this album. This trip was 2019 and I've just been kind of slowly working on the layouts as I feel inspired, but it was such a fun trip, definitely a special one. And I wanna get all of the details recorded before too much time passes. This sticker says to the mountains. I kind of like that one down there. I am a big fan of word stickers. This one says discover more. And then we still have our stamp set. This says some views are worth every step. And I could put that directly on my photo. That would look cool. Mm, I'm kind of scared. So <laughs> let's uh, maybe put this right here on the layout. 
If you are going to stamp directly on your photo, I highly recommend you put that into a stamp positioner like the Misty. It's just, I have high gloss photo paper, which is slippery and it's too big of a risk and I already adhered everything down. So if I hadn't, I could have put that in the stamp positioner, but I like it here too. That looks great. This is the background element stamp set. It is seriously my number one stamp. I use this more than any other stamp in my collection. I'm gonna add a little splatter in mocha ink back behind these tags. So let me tuck those back in here, get everything into place. And it's just a little detail peeking out. Let's add this over here on the left-hand side as well. Now, oh, that's that's nice and stuck. <laughs> Let me grab my little tool. This is a scrapbooking tool from Close to My Heart, and it is great for breaking the adhesive back there. You know, it might wreck the paper or kind of damage the paper, but I'm putting that sticker right back down so it doesn't matter. You can also use this off of the block and use your finger to get a smaller area. My friend Jama showed me this and she does this all the time. Before I bring in those other layouts, I did add a little bit of twine to, or ribbon and twine to the tops of my tags. I filled out my little journaling spot, have an arrow here that is from the paperboard shapes and it points to the journaling. And then on the opposite side, I have this border here and I wanted to bring that into the other side. So I had, you know, a section probably about a five inch section left. So I cut just a couple pieces to add to either side of my title. And I can even use this, you know, I saved this, I can use that on another project, like decorating the bottom of a tag or just sticking out of another embellishment cluster. And I also added one more word sticker to the top there, just to kind of frame that corner in. And yeah, I really like it. So let's go ahead and bring in the other layouts from this collection. There is a workshop for this collection, so you can put together the pre-designed layouts super quick and easily. I like to do my own thing and kind of make it work for my photos. And I created this layout. You can see I use the paperboard shapes for the title. This is a stamp and that is from my stash. So I have a big collection of outdoor themed stamps and I wanted to use that one. I thought it tied in really well. I had additional photos. So these will be attached uh, to the outside. This is a flip flap. It's a four by four flip flap and it has an adhesive strip and you just can adhere that to the outside of your page protector and flip it up to add more photos or more journaling, things of that nature. So it's a great way to keep the design, but add more pictures. And I lo love how this one turned out. I just love the trees down on the bottom. You can see how I've used those, you know, just like I did on the opposite layout there. Oh, I should point out that this is also from the background element stamp set. I just stamped a little bit of that um, kind of texture onto the background. I haven't adhered the flip flap yet because this, I need to tuck it into its forever home and then I'll put that onto the flip flap. This is the third layout I created with that workshop or with this change of scenery workshop. And I've used that gorgeous scenery paper as my background on this and created another linear layout. This is my mom and I hiking one of our favorite little mountain hikes. And I've used this uh, title from the paperboard shapes. And you can see I use the trees from the stamp set there and the rest. Oh, here's another uh, stamped image. I created a sentiment sticker from the stamp set and the rest are are from the sticker sheet. This here is one of those postage or from the postage stamp paper. I just fussy cut that out and popped it up and I thought it looked really cute right there. So I also want to show you some other layouts. I use that stencil. Oh, and I added a little, little bit of glitter paper to the bottom here. And I just thought that was really fun. I don't typically add glitter paper to my outdoor layouts, but you know, it's my mom and I, and I just seemed to go and I thought, why not? This is one half of a double page layout and I've used the explore portion of that stencil. You can see it's a layered stencil. I think that looks so cool. You can choose your ink colors and I did fussy cut that out, but this is, you can see here in the catalog picture, you have all of the, there's actually four layers. I only used three to create my title, but I think that that is just so cool. You could use just the mountains or just the tree line, uh, lots of different things you can do with the explore title. So that's an example of that. I'll just bring in my album for this one. 
This is the other half of this particular layout and I had a ton of pictures and I just wanted to show you how cool this is. We talked about the flip flaps. This is like a pocket plus that you can add into the center of your album here and you can even attach flip flaps to that. So I am going to put all the journaling for this hike. We were hiking in the Dolomite Mountains in Italy and so I've got a lot to say about this particular adventure. So I'm going to have a whole four by four inch square to type up my story and add it there but I just thought that that's another great way to add photos um, you know while still keeping a really fun design on your on your layout let me just pull this out of the way here is a travel themed layout I created where I've used the map for the background stencil. So that is part of this uh, outdoor adventure travel. You can see there's the world map, which is what I've used here. And I used a little toffee ink to create that and then stamped over the top of it for my little plane. And there's a city map as well. And then like this layers up to make a suitcase. You've got a city skyline that you can layer for like a dimensional look and then a title, Live, Love, Travel. But that's the map um, right there. I, th I love how that turned out. And I just kind of stenciled darker around the outside edge to make that look a little bit more like distressed and then splattered over the top of it. This layout is just one example of a from a class I taught in the Creative Design Team membership group. The whole month we focused on different stenciling techniques. So this title, Hello Sunshine, that is from this uh, portion of this stencil right here. You can see we've got water, the title, tropical leaves, the sun, and a little row of seashells down there. I think is so cute. Love shells. But I did an offset or stencil shifting technique to add a little bit of interest to that title. So do you see how it's got two tones and it looks dimensional? So that was a really fun technique, but that's a great example of how you can use the title on that uh, stencil. If you found this video to be helpful and inspiring, I'd love it if you'd stop, take a second and hit that thumbs up button. Everything I use to create this layout can be found in the description box below. And if you're looking for more outdoor adventure inspiration, definitely watch this video right here. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time on YouTube.